All right. So, hopefully that didn't make me completely out of focus. Hello again, my name is Jordan, AKA Son of the First, and by AKA I mean I refer to myself as that when I'm looking at myself in the mirror. Today we're going to talk about a very fundamental part of computer science that is kind of overlooked by a lot of people who already know what they're talking about. One of these days I'm gonna have hair that is not complete nonsense, but today is not that day. I'm also trying different things with lighting and whatnot because I really don't know what I'm doing with lighting. I didn't know when I went to school to do this, so it, it, it hasn't changed. So today we're going to be talking about scopes, global and local variables, and functions. I'm going to try to just give a bird's eye view of them. A scope is essentially a subsection of a program where variables and functions are valid. Declarations within a scope can only be used within that scope. Scopes tend to differ from language to language, but there are four or five that are pretty common throughout whatever language you're trying to code in. The first of those is the file scope. This is what we'll call global variables later. These are visible throughout the program and can be used anywhere and in any function. This scope starts at the beginning of the file and ends at the end of the file. The next is the block scope, and that starts and ends with curly braces, which you'll use a lot. This is uh, any variable declared in here is local to the block itself. The next is the function prototype. This is when you're defining your functions and saying which variables they will have as uh, parameters. Things declared in the prototype itself are local to the prototype and will not be used anywhere else. The last one is the function scope and that starts and ends within any function that you define and the scopes are kept separate. Function ABC is a different scope than function 123 essentially. So you can declare multiple functions and have the same named variables within those functions. So that brings us to global and local variables. Uh, you might have noticed me saying global and local a lot in that last section. This is just an indication of where that variable is actually accessible and usable. Global variables are defined at the file level and can be used throughout the program, like I mentioned. And usually they're declared at the very top of the program. You can technically declare variables throughout the program, like in between your functions and stuff like that, but generally that's kind of a faux pas. Local variables are contained to whatever scope that they're defined in. If a variable is declared within a function, it can be only used within that function. So if you have variable A in function, in a function, as soon as you get out of that function, variable A cannot be accessed. And if you try to access variable A outside of that function, you'll encounter an error. Generally, this is when your compiler will throw an error and say, hey, you can't do that. So the last part of this I want to talk about is functions. Functions are primarily to serve uh, a couple purposes within your program. Technically speaking, you don't have to use them, but you really should. Technically, you can write your entire program on one line, but you really shouldn't. Don't, don't write your code without functions, please. One reason is for just sectionalizing your code and just keeping it a little bit tidier. Bundle up some code, put it in a function, and then forget about it forever. And the next and most common reason that you would use a function is reusing code. Coding something is not a necessarily easy task, so you are going to want to reuse as much as you can. Plagiarize from yourself? Don't care. It's totally fine. This would be generally code that you're going to reuse over and over and over again with different inputs, uh, or that you just need to use more than once. So there are a couple things that are required for functions uh, themselves. The first is a declaration. This usually comes with a type, a name, and a parameter list. In the declaration, you don't need to give the names of the parameters, just the types. This just lets the program know what kinds of variables you're going to pass to that function so that it knows what to expect. Some languages allow you to do something called function overloading, and that just lets you declare a function multiple times. So you could have a function that has two parameters of type int, or you could have a function that has of that same name that has no parameters. All this does is it lets you call either of them. Say a parameter is optional, you would want to overload that function because then you would have one declaration that has zero parameters and one declaration that has however many parameters that you need. Uh, next, I wanna talk about the anatomy of a function. So not the declaration, the actual defining the function itself and its code. This will vary from language to language. 
but these pieces are pretty common in everything. The first is your return type. This is mostly in C, Python, and JavaScript. It just tells the compiler or the interpreter what type will be returned from that function. And we'll talk about what a return is in a second. And the next is the parameter list. That is what parameters will be passed to that function when it is called. These are going to be ints, strings, characters, booleans, that sort of thing. And generally at this point you would give it a name because in the function you will be calling it by that name. The next is the block. So uh, between those curly braces that we use so much, uh, this is most often defined by curly braces. In languages like Python this is just replaced by an indent. So any code within a function would be indented. It's kind of weird and kind of strange to look at, but it's also pretty nice if I'm being completely honest. In this block is where all of your code goes. So everything that will be executed when the function is called. And at the end of your block, you have a return. It has to match what the return type of your function is. If it's not, again, it Compiler or interpreter will throw an error. If the return type is int, you have to return an int. If the return type is void, don't have a return. Your return statement needs to be return followed by whatever you're returning. And that thing that you're returning can be a variable or it can be a value. Your return statement will return whatever follows the return keyword. There we go. I just had to take things slowly. Any, anything that is here will be returned out of the function and can be used elsewhere. And that is where we come to calling and using a function. Uh, there are two ways, two main ways to uh, use a function call. Either the normal call, which just runs the function, just by putting its name and the parentheses and whatever needs to be passed to it, it will just run that function. It essentially tells the code it, as it's executing, going down the list of code to execute, it hits that that function call and jumps to wherever in your code that function is defined and then it will execute that and then it will return return is not the right word to use here uh it will after executing the function it will continue through your main function that's what i'm gonna go with you can also use a function call as a variable value so essentially you would say my variable equals my function call. So once that function returns something, it will assign it to that variable. And that's a good way of being able to use your function output in your main function. Yeah, yeah. And then I can use that at will, essentially. That makes sense, right? And that is by no means a comprehensive description of how any of this stuff works. I just wanted to give a brief introduction. Why did I say that weird? a brief introduction, I could say words, to scopes and functions, and maybe get you on the right path to figuring this stuff out on your own. Um, yeah, thank you. I think that's everything. And I look, I don't want to say like a hermit, but hermit adjacent.